Republicans launch a final effort to stop a Democratic takeover. Trump continues to blast the media while taking shots at pollsters. And Utah is suddenly the place to be for presidential campaigns. Tonight on The Hinkley Report. Early voters head to the polls in critical battleground states. Democrats are on their heels as Obamacare rates skyrocket. Can Trump capitalize on this October surprise? Meanwhile, the Clinton campaign quietly begins moving forward with its transition team. In Utah, Evan McMullen continues to defy the odds, shining the national spotlight on the state. I, I absolutely do not believe that it's throwing away your vote. Mike Pence tries to shore up Republican support in a last minute visit to Utah. Clinton adds more staff to her Utah office. All this as tens of thousands of Utahns have already cast their votes. Good evening and welcome to the Hinckley Report. Covering the week, we have Natalie Gochner, director of the Kem C. Gardner Policy Institute, Spencer Stokes, former executive director of the Utah Republican Party, and Terry Gilday, news director of KUER. Thank you all for being with us today. It's been quite a week in politics. First, I wanna talk about what's happened in Utah. Throughout this election, people have been commenting on how Utah has been very relevant on the national stage. Uh, this week, some interesting developments on, on that commentary, though, as we see Lou Dobbs trying to talk about uh, why Evan McMullen is doing so well in the state. And he, he says in a tweet, look deeper, he's nothing but a globalist, Romney and Morba, Mormon mafia tool. Not something I thought I would see <laughs> uh, someone say. What do you make of this, this tweet, uh, Natalie? Jason, I, I love seeing Utah being relevant. And uh, if, if Lou Dobbs wants to say the Mormon mafia, more power to him, because as you know, uh, this community and people all around the country went ahead and tweeted back and uh, basically had a little fun with the Mormon Mafia hashtag. Did you have a favorite one, a favorite response? I, I love the funeral potato one, <laughs> right? Because yeah. the Mafia is going around killing people and we serve funeral potatoes. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was just, uh, you know, vintage Washington kind of elitism kind of mm -hmm. saying that and, and I love the response from our state. Well, the, the state certainly had a response, but th that text, uh, that tweet really kind of sounded a, a little bit angry, like something is happening here that they don't really quite understand. What did you make of it when you heard about it, Spencer? Well, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's, it's less about Evan McMullen and more about this this campaign season and we, look any any time the national media can make utah look weird they got to do it it's part of it i mean we we do well in every aspect of the economy and in in just about every area we're top but anytime they can make us look a little weird they're going to do it so but spencer i'm going to say that the rest of the country's weird not us it, it, that's that, because that's 100 just, percent correct you know this election and the things going on and i'm just so proud of our state for and i'm not you know i'm not saying i'm in the evan mcmullen camp but i'm just proud of our state for being willing to you know think about what's right for the country to vote your conscience and to to not feel like it's you know some binary choice i, I love what's going well, on is that what you're seeing this being then because this seems to intimate that maybe mcmullen's doing well because of the mormons yeah. and you're saying it's maybe not that this isn't a mormon thing so what kind of thing is it? McMullen's filling a gap, honestly. I think when, when, when you look at the way that Utah voters, especially Utah Republicans, reacted to um, the, the tipping point for the Donald Trump campaign, which was the video that was leaked earlier this month, Utah voters wanted a place to cast their vote where they felt that someone had a moral center to stand up and lead the country in a way that they'd hoped Mitt Romney would in 2012. I think Mellon has, has filled that void. I think, um, I think the Mormon Mafia stuff really shows that Utah has a sense of humor, that we can tweet back about that. Utah really still is a misunderstood a place when it comes to the rest of the country. And I think that Dobbs and others are still trying to reinforce mm -hmm. those stereotypes that we really have gotten beyond in this state. Uh -huh. Do you see this, to, just to follow up to that, is Utah spoiling the presidential race by not falling in line with one of these parties? I, I'm not sure what you mean by spoiling in a sense. I mean, I think people feel upset that a third party candidate is rising and capturing so much attention in Utah. But I think McMullen's campaign and McMull who McMullen is is speaking to Utah voters. So for and, some that's spoiling, I suppose. And, and what I've loved is the attention, you know, uh -huh. that we're relevant. Uh, when I watch what the Clinton campaign is doing in this state, 
This is the well, first time yeah. I remember that a, that a Democrat presidential campaign has spent so much time and effort in yeah. Utah. Yeah. They generally have written written it off. Uh, I will tell you, you know, Pence, I don't know the last time we had a vice presidential visit twice. Uh, we had uh, Donald Trump's son, Eric, come to town. Mm -hmm. uh, there is There is an effort to try to move Donald Trump into the win category. But let's put this in perspective. We have six electoral votes. I mean, uh, and the fact that yeah. we're being yeah. somewhat relative with our little six electoral votes is impressive, but I think it speaks volumes to the rest of the country about why we're doing it, mm -hmm. why Evan McMullen is doing well. And if it were Evan McMullen or, or you or you or you, it, it could be any of us. It, if the person was a, uh, a person of high moral uh, turpitude, I think you'd see that person get the vote as well. Uh, this is a race not about um, whether he's a Mormon or Episcopal or Catholic. It's about somebody who has some character. And I think that's what's lacking in this year's yeah. contest is character. Mm -hmm. And I think no question about that, but I think we are overselling a little bit the McMullen side of it because I think that Senator Clinton is attracting some votes from this state. No question. You know she is, and uh, I don't know exactly how to explain that. Uh, but you know we had her husband, we had Bill Clinton, President Clinton, mm -hmm. visit our state as That's well, right. and we've had these two uh, opinion editorials in the I Desert News. I have some News. in my household. Let me just say that <laughs> some Hillary yeah, supporters, like some Hillary okay. supporters in my household. Spencer, what did you make of these uh, this this opinion editorial by uh, Tim Kaine? Tim Kaine, all right. Look, it's it is uh, it's this this panic to try to get. They see for the first time that they could potentially get yeah, yeah. get Utah, and I I still believe that the Democrats going to come in third here. Um, I think it's going to be. I do believe that Donald Trump is going to narrowly win Utah. I believe Evan McMullen will come in in second place, very close, and I think Hillary Clinton will come in third place. But I, I do think Tim Kaine's op-ed piece or editorial was, was really important. And he's drawing on his own experience with Jesuit education and Jesuit missionary work and trying to reach uh, um, LDS folks in the state and say, you know, we're not so different. Yeah. We mm -hmm. are motivated by a sense of doing good for others and a sense about doing good in the world. And that's what Tim Kaine represents in the Hillary Clinton ticket. Is well, that yeah. Both of them have picked someone of high moral yeah. standing. I mean. Uh, Governor Kane, Senator Kane, yeah, and Mike Pence, and Mike Pence yeah, are. are both f wonderful people and and don't have the baggage that the person that's mm -hmm. leading the ticket does. Terry, when I read the editorial and it mentioned, you know, when you drop your sons and daughters off at the MTC in Provo, <laughs> yes. yeah. I'm Very just Utah like, specific. Yeah. yeah, and that, that, that shows that, you know, they really personalized it to this market. That shows that they have someone very good in Utah <laughs> who's <laughs> <Right>. very familiar <laughs> with the uh, Mormon culture, who's yeah. willing to write an op-ed yeah. for well, them. And that's the second time, right? Uh, Hillary yeah. wrote one as well, right. which was very much targeted to the LDS audience. Is it having an impact? When you read it, how did, did well, you feel felt, like it was going to have I an impact? I felt manipulated by it. <laughs> and then I thought, but it's so well done. Yeah. And <laughs> I have a daughter, you, you know, millennial, lives mm -hmm. out of state. She's the one that uh, tweeted it to me, you know, saying, you know, you got to check this out. Well, I can't help but think that, that what opened the door to this opportunity for both Hillary and Tim Kaine to write op-eds was the Deseret News op-ed mm -hmm. for the first time in 80 years, calling, uh, weighing in on the presidential race and calling for Trump to drop out in the wake of the video release. So that was, that was a really huge. pivotal, that was, that was a milestone in this election cycle yeah. for Utah, a milestone. Yeah, yeah, huge. Do you think it changed things for Evan McMullen when that came out? I certainly helped him, I think. I think people took a long look in the mirror and said, who do I really want to vote for president? Who, who, who do I believe has the moral center to lead, especially now that, um, that Donald Trump doesn't, or our people have come to that decision. I did a story for NPR on, on this very issue and talked to um, the folks at the Deseret News and talked to uh, Amy Winder Newton uh, about her decision. She was very vocal on social media. This is the Republican who serves on the Salt Lake County Council. She was very vocal on social media about her decision to drop to drop Donald Trump as a supporter. And she was, uh, she was, she was a delegate about, at, she at the RNC. She was very vocal about having Donald, uh, you know, deciding to vote for Donald Trump at Correct. the RNC. Correct, Correct. So, And then she switched. So then yes. she switched. Well, but each of, each praise of, to her. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Each because of these candidates. What he said and how that you know speaks uh, to the office of the highest elected office of the land. I I I think that I'm like a lot of Utah voters and a lot a lot a lot like a lot of women voters who mm, can't the go there. The next time you have a person say they're going to vote for Evan McMullen, I'd like to challenge each of you to ask what is it exactly you, <laughs> you like, like about <laughs> Evan McMullen, 
And the answer will be, he's not Hillary Clinton and he's not Donald Trump. They can't tell you anything else about Evan McMullen. Uh, He's a bit of a but, mysterious figure. He, he uh, is to this day. They can right. maybe get the CIA part out, but that's <laughs> exactly. about it. And then but I've decided that's the one thing you can always say you used to do. Because who are they going to go that. check that out <laughs> with? I you mean, can't exactly yeah. verify that. Exactly, you can't well, verify that. Which, which makes you have to wonder, what is next for Evan McMullen? You have, and you have yeah. a guess? Potential statewide office. If this man can capture all six of Utah's electoral votes, that is a huge mm. basis for him to build a, a future political career off of. Oh. And he's essentially come out of nowhere. Certainly has better name ID than some of the other candidates that you see on the ballot already this year. Correct, but I think you're going to... Uh, look, Evan McMullen has publicly stated he wants to build a conservative movement. There's plenty of other people mm -hmm. who've tried to build a conservative movement. We can start with, you know, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a platform to do it. It's going to be very difficult if you're Evan McMullen to start a conservative movement, number one. Number two, when this election's over, Evan McMullen will be long forgotten uh, in our next races, our statewide races. You, look, John Huntsman's coming back to town. Uh, mm -hmm. Jason Chaffetz is on the, on the horizon. Chris Stewart is on the horizon. There are many other candidates that have been around and have proven track records. I, I think that if he wanted to, and if he wanted to live here and move here, I think that you might see something. But well, let's, let's talk about some of these people you just mentioned, because I think it's just very much a corollary, too. As on Donald Trump, we had several of our high-level elected officials, Congressman Chaffetz, even Chris Stewart, that were sort of maybe Trump supporters, even if tenuous, but then they clearly weren't. They went out and they kind of dropped it, but just this week, they're back, all right? They said, I'm not <laughs> endorsing, but I'm voting for. Because Hillary's so bad. But that's what he said, Typically. that's for yeah. Jason yeah. Chaffetz. That's the case they make, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. I, I saw a, uh, a Donald Trump Pence sign, lawn sign, and in a lawn, and next to it was a sign that said, because of the Supreme Court. They don't, they, they can't fully endorse, they've got to put up a sign to explain <laughs> why, why they're voting. The sign. Well, that's very Trump. telling, isn't it? That people want to explain why uh, right up front. That's not something you've seen for a very long time. So why did, the, why did these elected officials like Congressman Chaffetz and, and Stewart both now say, with just over a week to go, okay, I'm voting for Trump. Why do they do it? I think it's a mistake. It's, but it's hard not to imagine, specifically with Congressman Chaffetz, that his role as chairman of the House Oversight Committee is playing some role in his decision to re-endorse Trump. I'm not sure why, it's just a feeling that I have, but I think that uh, uh, his, his whole job as chairman has been to be a, a watchdog and a check and balance for the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he's preparing for what he might have to do during a Hillary Clinton administration, is getting it out there as clearly as he can, that he, he won't support that administration. Look, there are a lot of powerful people in this state that are supporting Donald Trump, and, and there is a constituency out there for Donald mm -hmm. Trump. Uh, when Donald Trump came and visited Utah, he had, it, it was packed. There were, mm -hmm. was a line down the street. There is a lot of energy around Trump supporters, and they're very, very vocal. And it's my hunch that all of those very vocal people have Talk. weighed in <laughs> with a Chris Stewart, a Jason Chaffetz. Now, Rob Bishop, interestingly, has never has never deviated. He's been a he's been a Trump reluctant Trump voter, mm -hmm. and he stayed a reluctant Isn't Trump that voter. Isn't true with Senator Hatch as well? That's same with Senator Hatch. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because think about Congressman Chaffetz or, or Stewart, uh, and, and what you said was very in insightful, particularly about that core, the Donald Trump core, right? So where do they go after this is done? And if, if a young elected official wants to become an, an old elected official, uh, how risky is it, uh, it appears that they have sort of abandoned their party? Is that how this would look? Well, I mean, clearly the Republican Party is got to dumpster fire, that's what everyone wants yeah. to say, and there's gonna have to be a lot of rebuilding that occurs. Uh, I'm of the opinion that the Trump people don't go away, and that they actually exist for a reason, and that is that there is some rot in this country, you know, that needs to be addressed. But there, the interesting, there have been two movements in the last, you know, Senator Lee was elected during the Tea Party movement, and, and it, it lasted for a little while, the Donald Trump people are not the same people as the Tea Party movement. Yeah. Mm. I think largely the Donald Trump people are people who have been sitting on the sidelines, feeling like their voice wasn't heard, uh, and have now finally kind of 
It's it's uh, the cicadas, you know, every seven yeah. years yeah, the they come up out of the ground. But, but Spencer, I mean, right. you can say that, but it's sort of like, well, but the re the executive director of the Republican Party is in the Trump camp. The that's chairman, someone, chairman. okay, sorry, that's, yep. that's someone who's not yep. been on the sidelines. Correct. And then a lot of people I see speaking out for Donald Trump are people that are very active in the political world. But I'm talking across the country, the movement people, not the leadership, yeah. but the people who are showing up mm. at the rallies, yeah. they're, they're not showing up there yeah. with Tea Party hats on. They're showing up there with Donald Trump hats. Uh, and, and it's, there's, I don't think, as much crossover as people really, really believe. But I think the election, the election is going to be closer electorally than people think. Mm. Uh, I think the national polls are... Um, the national polls, and I believe that that in each of the states, I find it hard to believe that that a Marco Rubio can be five points ahead in in uh, Florida, and that Donald Trump can be so far behind or or on mm -hmm. the edge. I I really believe there's more energy around the Republican nominee than there is around the Democrat nominee. I think all the energy, the the Bernie people. They're not happy at all. They're not. They're mm. not energized about Hillary Clinton. So I think election night is going to be a really fascinating night. Yeah. And I don't. I think it's very hard to predict because if a pollster were calling my house today and asking me who I was voting for for president, I don't think I'd want to say Donald Trump. So you, you think there's a huge amount of those people yeah, that are really going to vote but are not but saying Spencer, it? But Spencer, I mean, you. Who do you think is going to win? Well, I think Hillary Clinton has and the odds of winning. Yeah, Terry, are you there? I, I think I think she does. I think and, and she's I think she does. She's already looking toward her transition team. Mm -hmm. uh, but I but I do think that um, getting out and voting is imperative for for whatever candidate you feel may win the election or may not win the election. I, I interesting comment about the Bernie voters. I think that they're I think. You know, there have been calls in the Democratic Party for them to get past their anger. You know, mm -hmm. both both politicians and celebrities have said, get over it. You don't want Donald Trump as president, so you need to get out there and vote. At the same time, um, you know, we're seeing uh, all we've seen with the Evan McMullen movement and Trump, there's a concerted effort to try to defeat Hillary Clinton. And now with the email yeah. uh, investigation with Let's the FBI. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Like, this is just today, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the FBI director, James Comey, says, I'm reopening the investigation. Based on something they're doing with Anthony Weiner, if, if this is where they found these 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 emails, right? That they're now looking at again. Is this going to have an impact, or is it just too late? Yeah, a lot of votes have already been cast. We know that, but this election could still take some turns. We know that it's there's a lot. There's several days before the election. You, you were following this. Terry. I was. I was reading uh, the, um, the latest from the Washington Post today, and uh, Congressman Peter King, from a uh, Republican from Long Island, who's uh, uh, pivotal on the House um, Homeland Security Committee. Very excited about it, I guess. He says it's a bombshell. He thinks it's a game changer. We'll see. I think that a lot of those lawmakers in the House are concerned about uh, the House and the Senate shifting to a Democratic majority. So they'll be able to play this as much as they can to get voters to the polls to, to vote down the ticket, whether they vote for Donald Trump or not. Well, well, I, think, I think it's interesting. To, have you cast your ballot yet? Uh, no. Have you cast yours? You know, mine has not been mailed, but right? it is, but it's sealed. Sitting there. So I, I recognize <laughs> right. I, at, after tomorrow I could do something different. Right. Mine has not been. I think a lot of voters have been hanging on to their ballots. Uh -huh. I, th I think for the first time in a very long time, voters have held on. They've, they've, they're, they're thoughtful. I, I have a lot of faith in voters. They're thoughtful. They're wanting to see what's going to happen. They're, they're holding out to see what they, how, you know, they cast their, how they cast their vote. But I'm just thrilled that we're out of the teens before the election. I mean, mm -hmm. when it was 18 days, 19 days, we're now down out of the teens, and I'm so happy I'm to get this election <laughs> cycle <laughs> behind me. But I do think a lot of votes have been cast. Uh, but I, I think a lot have been held on to. I've been thinking about, you know, 2020 for years. <laughs> <laughs> right. She has indeed. Right. Well, so we have huge numbers being reported, people voting early, but a lot of people are waiting for that last act. But I'm curious how the Republicans can capitalize on this a little bit. Any other campaign, any other year, this, this drips of emails would have been pretty serious for a candidate. It hasn't been so far. But you even have Paul Ryan coming out today saying, I think we need to, need to suspend the security briefings for Hillary Clinton until they get to the bottom of it. How does it, maybe this is for you, Spencer, to think about, how do the Republicans really, with just a few days left, really capture this email problem? Well, it will be difficult because, as you know, the, the media 
has, I, I think, shown a fairly clear bias in their direction. I, w I was with uh, Congressman Stewart last night who was talking about the Republicans holding a press conference and Nancy Pelosi holding a press conference at the same time. And there were 60 cameras in the Nancy Pelosi press conference and three in the Republican press conference. So it will be very difficult to push the message out, you know, through the media. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that will be a challenge. Uh, because I believe they're there. I just have to speak up. Go ahead. Yeah, well, we well, because it's that really too. a bombshell. <laughs> well, if it's really a bombshell, they'll be all over it, Spencer. They're not going to ignore a bombshell. And I think it breathes new life in, into Republicans who have, uh, like Paul Ryan, who have, have pretty much had to hide under a rock to, because they've, all they've been asked about is how to defend Donald Trump. Now they have something to sink their teeth into. Now they have something to, to really go after in the final days of the election. I really think the media is going to is going I to think you're going to see. It. I think you're going to see. And you, after you've watched this program tonight, switch to the other stations. To. <laughs> switch to the other stations, and you will see the words "October surprise," "last minute." And now I know it's coming from a from a Democrat administration, but all of those words will be leveraged about this email. It will be very easy for the media to sweep something in the last minute say look this is a last minute yeah. attack and we're not we're just not going to give the coverage to it you wait and see we, tonight's we know, commentary we don't know what it is you know right. we don't know what it is okay. but but if it's something important a I bombshell mean, yeah we got to yeah. pay attention to it okay so one, one thing and uh, natalie i've heard you give a presentation just this week uh we, we had this this tweet from mitt romney that went out this week which was interesting uh where he said be sure to head to the polls for the gop Senate, House, and state houses, right? <laughs> <laughs> didn't, mention, didn't mention president, I, I notice in that. But I'm, I'm curious how this relates to the current concern that the Republicans have about keeping majorities uh, in the House and the Senate. Natalie, you've been looking at this hard this week. I mean, well, everyone looks at it. I mean, the prevailing wisdom right now is that the House will stay in Republican hands. The Senate is a toss up. This guy mm -hmm. will know more That's about correct. that and uh, that uh, Senator Clinton will be in the White House. Uh, interestingly, when I look at the economic, there's actually economic uh, work that's done that calls elections as well. They look at the economies in every state and predict who's gonna win. And the electoral count in the economic uh, prognosticators is the same as the polling prognosticators. 333 electoral votes for mm -hmm. Senator Clinton. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, might be dated it's, by a day, but. It's, when the House, no question, it will be Republican. In the Senate, it is interesting that the down ticket, mm -hmm. usually the down ticket uh, uh, candidates rely heavily on the up ticket to, to, for their races. This year it's a year where there's a lot of splitting going on, but the bright spots for the Republicans in this uh, Senate year is that Marco Rubio decided to come back and run. Mm -hmm. I, I was shocked that he said he would do it, but look, the Republicans needed him. Mm -hmm. He'll win Florida. Toomey's ahead in, in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, we're not doing well with Kirk in, in Illinois. Uh, Ron Johnson's not doing well in Wisconsin in the, in the kind of toss-up category. So it will, be, it will be nip and tuck. Kelly Ayotte is not doing mm -hmm. well in New Hampshire. Um, and uh, Burr is doing well, though, in North Carolina. I think it will be very, very close. I certainly hope it's a one-vote vote margin. Uh, either way, it's, it's terrible when it's exactly 50-50. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, could see, I could see the Republicans holding on to the Senate. Do you think it'll go past Wednesday and Thursday? We won't know. I do. Yeah, I do believe I there's going to well. be a lot of, uh, I was saying to you earlier, Natalie, I, I think it will be a few days before. It won't be, it won't be Gore December, Bush, yeah. yes, <laughs> but, it, but it will be days after the election on some of those Senate races. Mm -hmm. How do you see this shaping up? What you have a prediction? Uh, I'm going to go with 50-50 and that Tim Kaine it becomes pretty important. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He <laughs> does indeed. Uh, Terry, really quick, uh, in our, on our final couple of minutes, uh, we've mentioned that we've had a lot of attention, of attention from the candidates. Uh, Mike Pence coming to Utah this week. Uh, at the end, you'd think that they'd be focusing on some of these swing states, right? That's where they would be uh, spending most of their time and effort, but he felt like he had to come here. And the message was, it's time for the Republicans to come home. I, th I think that's probably it. 
Yeah, just and he had, some, he had some powerful points he was bringing up. He, he referenced Ronald Reagan's 1964 speech, which is a time to choose. This was during the, the Goldwater-Johnson uh, election of 1964, and, and Reagan had recently become a uh, Republican. He had switched over from the Democratic Party. It's really the beginning of Reagan, the Reagan we know of today, sort of forming himself. And he had a, a, a half-hour nationally televised speech in support of Barry Goldwater. The thing is, is that it didn't work, and that was a, a landslide mm -hmm. election in favor of Lyndon Baines Johnson. So I found it interesting that um, that Mike Pence invoked that speech at the rally, saying that the, um, he 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 quoted. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here what Reagan said in the speech that there's there's really not, no such thing as a left or a right. There's an up or a down, and uh, Mike Pence said that this vote really is about an up or down vote. Um, but again, it's interesting that he referenced this speech. Uh, when it was something that didn't pan out for Republicans mm -hmm. the way they wanted to. I'm not sure that the crowd caught the irony of that, but I certainly did, so. Well, as a great student. Yeah, well, I would just say, Mike Pence, what we've learned this election is he's got a future. Uh -huh. You know, in his visits here, he fills the room. He's, he's a talented man. Uh, we're gonna see more of him. Mm -hmm. You think if he was at the top of the ticket, this would be a completely different race? I think if any of the other candidates were at the top of the ticket, this would be a completely <laughs> different race. I think Absolutely. if you had been at the top of the ticket, this would be a completely different race. You're here. Okay, for sure. We, we have about 20 seconds. We're doing a little prediction, quick prediction. Uh, presidential race? We'll see Senator Clinton in the White House. Mm -hmm. Clinton. Clinton in the White House, and I think Republicans will retain control of both the Senate and the House. Wow. I agree with that. I'd give a <laughs> thumbs up on that, like the up or down vote. There we go. <laughs> we we have the endorsement right. from Spencer Stokes right there, the <laughs> thumbs up. All right, thank you so much for being part of this. It's been a fascinating conversation. It's gonna be an interesting week, or week in a few days, Pleasure. right? Thank you so much. That's it for the Hinkley Report. For more political analysis and news of the week, please check out our Hinkley Report web extra online. We'll be back next week. Thank you and good night.